Hi everyone, this is Marlena Morse with Gowan Consulting and today I'm going to be talking about the Return to Work Obstacles and Self-Efficacy Scale, otherwise known as ROSES. Musculoskeletal and mental health disorders were the top two conditions for workplace claims for sick benefit in 2011. As of 2017, long-term disability insurers stated that mental health was the number one claim for long-term disability. Therefore, the IRSST looked further into the factors that caused employees not to return to work related to common mental health and musculoskeletal disorders. These two disorders often ended with a prolonged absence from work. This is costing businesses and the economy a great deal. As occupational therapists, we are aware that the success of returning to work has many different factors. We look into how the person, the occupation, and the environment in which the occupation is completed are impacting the client's return to work. This return is further complicated with the interactions of the workplace as a whole, the healthcare system, and the benefits and compensation system, and how this impacts the client. The Return to Work Obstacles and Self-Efficacy Scale was developed by the IRSST in 2016. The members of the this group are listed on the slide. It was meant to be used to spark a dialogue about the 10 dimensions that they saw as an obstacle to return to work and determine if an employee felt that they had the coping strategies to overcome those obstacles. The 10 determinations were determined by research lit, um, literature research and noting that there was many commonalities between common mental health disorders and musculoskeletal. They came up with an assessment consisting of 46 questions with two parts to each question. I use the roses when the employee is ready and capable of handling the conversation about returning to work. At times, this is not appropriate for the initial assessment. If the client is not getting out of bed, not getting dressed, and not handling most of their ADLs, it might be premature to complete the roses with them. For me, I usually use this assessment tool when the client is about three to four weeks away from starting work. Alternatively, if you have not been working with the client, but the initial meeting is at a facilitated return to work meeting, and they are going to back to work immediately, you might start the conversation with the use of this tool. Either way, I use this tool as part of my interviewing skills to discuss the issues that might be present when returning to work. When I present the roses, I have many clients who become anxious about this tool because it talks about mental health in the title. I preface the use of the assessment discussing how physical health is on a continuum. It ranges from being healthy, to being under the weather with a cold, to being sick with the flu, to being very ill with some type of disease. Then I discuss how mental health is on the same type of continuum, where we can be well and mentally not have any issues at all, to being irritable and down in spirit, to being very sad and somewhat depressed, or to be very ill with major depressive disorder. I also explained that physical issues can affect us mentally as well. Then throughout the assessment, I read the statement on the left-hand side of the tool, and if it states common mental health disorders, I skip the word mental and just say common health disorders, as I try to encompass mental health and physical health. I've tried to copy a section of the ROSES assessment on this slide. So if you take number seven as an example, I would read, 
do you foresee, foresee negative reactions from your coworkers after telling them about your health problem as being an issue when you return to work? I would then ask them to rate the obstacle from one to seven, with one being not an obstacle and seven being a big obstacle. Then I do ask them how capable do they feel about overcoming this obstacle? And ask them again to rank from one being not capable at all to seven being completely capable. After the client rates their scores, I would then ask them why they felt that their coworkers would not have would have a negative reaction. I would discuss if they wanted their coworkers to know about their health issues, and then maybe discuss on how they would like that information to be presented if they were interested. Other questions on the tool present the opportunity to further find out more about your client. It gets you to delve deeper into, for example, number eight, why does the employee feel he has poor relations with his insurance company? Or number nine, why did your family and friends not support you returning to work? Or how do your friends and family support you in returning to work? Number 10, what causes you to have low motivation and a lack of interest in returning to work? One of our subcontractors, Lindsay Cox, put together this scoring tool for us to use with the roses in Excel. So once the assessment is completed, instead of having to get out our calculators and calculate the scores for the assessments, she has made it nice and easy so we can just plug in our values. You plug all the values that the client put down in part A for obstacles in the column marked A. Likewise, you can put all the values the client put for the capacity to handle the obstacle in the second column marked B. If your column state, the client states in column A that the question statement was not an obstacle, you will have skipped part B. But when you are filling in the scoring tool, you need to place the value of seven completely capable in the column to generate a correct score. The scoring tool will generate the values for A and B for each of the 10 dimensions. Once you have a value from the scoring tool, you plot that into the interpretation table. The problematic range is more severe than the general problematic range. The greatest factors that predict issues with returning to work with a mental health disorder is cognitive difficulties and job demands. Whereas the greatest factors that predict issues with return to work with a musculoskeletal disorder is fear of relapse, job demands, feelings of the or, uh, feeling of organizational injustice, and difficult relations with their immediate supervisor. This is an example of what I write up to reflect the dimensions that the client has been reporting difficulties with in my report. I do feel that this tool is very useful in hearing and setting a value to the client's obstacles and perceived coping skills that are affecting their ability to return to work. It can also be helpful to assist in determining the direction of treatment and the strategies that are going to be taught to the client depending on where they feel they are lacking coping. So to sum up, I do feel that this tool is very useful in hearing what the client feels their obstacles and perceived coping skills are. It helps workplaces realize that they need to have realistic work accommodations and they need support for their employees to return to work if a successful return to work is warranted and wanted. This assists the clients to have insight on obstacles that they may find are barriers and their capacity to handle those obstacles. I find the best use of this tool is that once you've been working with the client for a while, when you re-administer the roses, after they've returned to work, and have learned some of the coping skills. It's always nice to be able to show with a value to your client how much 
that they have overcome, that they don't perceive the obstacles to the same degree as they did before, and now they're more confident with respect on being capable of handling those obstacles in the workplace. Thanks for listening to a quick run through on how I use the roses with my clients. I hope that I've been able to shed some light on how you can use the roses in your assessment and throughout your treatment with your clients. Hopefully I provided you with some practical information that you can use in your practice. Take care and have a wonderful work day.